yesterday, we talked about, uh, you know, why negative numbers are essential. And the idea is basically, you know, once you introduce subtraction, anytime you go ahead and start trying to subtract a bigger number from a smaller number, you run into problems because you cross past zero. Uh, and that's why we have negative numbers to allow for that. And then if you put in all of the negative numbers and whole numbers together, um, let me make this a little then uh, that's what's called the integers. So the integers, these are uh, the whole numbers, both uh, negative and positive. So, you know, it's like all of the numbers, basically. But it's just the whole ones. Um, those would be called the integers. Uh, I don't actually know if we talked about it, but the, uh, so the counting numbers are what we were working with in, uh, chapter one, or chapter two, actually, but in the first section last week. Uh, those are just the whole positive numbers. So, anyways. Uh, we're going to deal with lots of different number types in this class, and so, uh, we, I just sort of start start finding them now, but it's sort of like uh, it, the the number systems just build on each other. So first you start with all the whole positive numbers because that's what you use to count. And then you realize that you can go into negative numbers. So then when you put them together, all the negatives and positives, that leads to integers. Um, then in the next unit, as soon as you do division, then all of a sudden you can have fractions and stuff like that. So then we'll have to introduce another type of number. Okay. But anyways. So knowing exactly which numbers belong to like which number class isn't like super essential, but it's good to know that there's different types of numbers. Okay. Uh, and there's a justification for them. Anyways, point is, is that now uh, we are working with negative numbers. And so <clears throat> we just need to review how to work with those with the main operations, which are addition, subtraction, and then multiplication and division. Okay, so what happens, for example, if I start throwing in negative numbers, so let's say I had like negative 10 plus, I don't know, like seven. Okay, well, how do you combine negative 10 and a positive seven? What's the answer going to be? If I take negative 10 and add 7, where am I going to be? Negative. It's going to be at negative 3. Okay? Now, this is why negative numbers are kind of annoying, is because the, um, the operation is addition, and yet you end up actually subtracting the two numbers, right, to get your solution. So, one way to think about adding and subtracting negative numbers is you can think of it as kind of like on the number line. You don't have to draw it every time, but envisioning the number line, right, the first number is telling you where to start, right? So the, if you, re, you read these things left to right, and so negative 10 is where you're starting. So say zero is here, and then the operation tells you which way to go, right? So if you're adding, you're going plus 7, and so you can see on the number line you're not making it back to zero. Um, but you're making it close to zero. Okay. So that's one way to um, solve negative and uh, positive addition subtractions is with the number line. Another way to think about it is I think of it in terms, a lot of people, it helps to think in terms of money. It's like, okay, if you start at a bank balance of negative $10 and then you deposit seven, where are you going? Yeah, you're, not, you're going towards positive. You're not going to make it back to positive, right, though? You're going to stay negative. Um, but you're going to get close to zero, right? So some people, it really helps to deal with it like money. Um, and then the other way is there's kind of a rule that I use is like if they have opposite signs, then you're going to subtract. You know, because basically I have a minus 10 and a plus 7. Okay, if they have opposite signs, then you're going to subtract. And then you're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. So that's kind of the rule. Um, how did you go? How did 
you guys remember learning stuff for how do you how did you learn that? Did you learn it by the rule or did you learn it just by thinking about it on the number line or I can't really I don't really know how it gets taught. Yeah. I originally learned it on the number line, but throughout my job, money made more sense. Yeah. So kind of. Yeah, I think originally it gets taught on the number line, but then um, most people start to think of it in sort of intuitively eventually if you work with it enough. It, but the key is just read it left to right, and then it's kind of like think of this as your starting point and that where you're going. And then uh, if, if you like rules though, then that's the rule. The rule is that if they have opposite signs, like a negative and a positive, and you're trying to combine them, then you just subtract and you keep assigned a bigger number. Because there's no way you can go back to positive if positive number is smaller than a negative number. So. Okay, so any of those work. Uh, so I'll give you a couple other examples. It's just that, uh, so let's say you had like, um, uh, let's say negative, what if you have like negative 5 minus uh, 8? What's going to happen there? Yeah, because you're starting out at a negative number, and then what are you doing? You're going further negative. So where are you going to land on this problem? Where are you going to end up? Negative 13. Okay. So again, if you think about the different strategies, okay, first off, you could think about it on the number line. Okay, Remember, you're reading left to right. Where are you starting? You're starting at negative 5. Okay, then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go back 8. And so where's that going to land you? It's going to land you further negative, so you actually end up adding. Which is another reason why it's annoying, because this is actually a subtraction problem. But in practice, we actually end up adding the digits in the negative direction, because they're going the same way. Okay. Uh, so if the number line works for you, that's great. Another way to think of it, right, is in terms of money. If your bank account is at minus five dollars and then you spend eight bucks, where are you going? You're going more negative, right, on your account. Um, but the rule for these, though, the rule here is um, if they're both the same sign, if they're both the same sign, then you add. You know, it's just that you're adding in either a positive direction or a negative direction. So since these are both negative numbers, negative 5, negative 8, then we're going to be adding them in a negative direction because they show the time. So that's a way you can remember it as well. So far so good? Okay. Then uh, what happens is occasionally what you'll find, though, is you'll see, uh, you'll run into scenarios where you have, like, let's say, uh, 7 plus negative 12. Okay. So what should we do here? This time I'm telling you to add in a negative number. So what are you going to end up doing? Yeah, it's going to end up being a subtraction problem because, again, the rule I told you was opposite signs, right? Now, is your result here going to be positive or negative? It's got to be negative because which number is bigger? A negative value, okay? So there's two ways. You can remember the rule. And you can just know that this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, 12 minus 7 is going to end up negative. Another thing, though, is this ultimately this ends up being a subtraction problem. So when I'm working inside of an expression or equation, anytime you see plus or minus, you can just immediately rewrite it and just say, okay, I know that this is the same as, uh, like, just minus 12. It's essentially the same thing. So it's like if I add a purchase to your bank account, what am I really doing? I'm taking away money from it, right? So anytime you see plus a negative number, you can just always rewrite it as a subtraction problem. And then if you're at 7 and you take away 12, then that's obviously going to land you negative, and then their opposite size is going to be negative 5. Okay. But anytime I see the plus minus, I just rewrite it as minus. Questions on that one? Okay, and then the other, the only other weird scenario that you might run into when you're adding and subtracting negative numbers is one like we saw yesterday with the temperatures. So you could have something like, let's say it's a negative 18 minus a negative 20. So what happens when you see minus a minus? Yeah, and we saw that yesterday. 
uh, when we were trying to do the difference of the temperatures, um, we were trying to subtract a negative number, but we found out that it was actually more like addition. And so it's like here, you're doing plus or minus. That becomes a minus. And so it's what's, and then here what happens is you're minusing a minus, they're gonna cancel each other out and become a, a plus. Essentially what the negative number does, the negative number reverses the direction of what you were supposed to be doing. So it's like I was supposed to be adding, but the negative number told me to turn around and subtract. And here, it's like we were supposed to be subtracting, but the negative number is going to come behind and tell us what you really want to do is that's going to switch directions and make you add. So the negative number basically just switches the sign of the operation. So this will minus, minus, plus, plus, and then what would that come out to be? If you're at minus 18 and you add 20, where are you going to land? Positive 2. Right. Yeah? Okay. So, everybody feel semi comfortable with the rules for adding subtracting negative numbers? Okay, I got some practice for you, I told you. I'll give it to you in a minute. Uh, now, the other operation, the, the other main operations are multiplication and divide, or division. So, multiply, divide, um, negatives and positive numbers. And for that, there's just kind of the rules. Um, there's a good reason for the rules if you actually care, but I'm going to write them down first, right? So for multiplying and dividing, okay, if you take, well, we know the first one, right? Let's say that if you take a, a positive number and you multiply it by a positive number, what are you going to come up with? It's going to be positive. Okay. Okay. So a positive times a positive number or a positive divided by a positive number, they always come out positive. Okay. Now, one of the weird ones, though, is if you take a negative number and you multiply by a negative number, uh, what happens? It turns out a negative number times a negative number is a positive number. Yeah. When you take a negative number and you multiply it by a negative, negative number, it's going to turn positive. And it's because the sign, remember, like, introducing a negative basically just, like, reverses the direction. And so negative numbers switch the signs of other negative numbers. Um, but the way I remember it, right, is that if they have the same sign, then it's going to come out positive. Okay. Right. If they're both positive or they're both negative, multiplying and dividing them is going to come out positive. Okay. Now, what happens uh, if you have a positive number with a negative number in multiplication and division? That's how you end up with negative numbers in multiplication and division. There's only one way to do it. It has to be a positive times a negative or vice versa, a negative times a positive. And so it's like if it's different signs, then that's how you can end up with a negative result. So and um, so the reason this works is because uh, multiplication is really just uh, a shorthand for repeated addition. So like if you think of um, like let's say if you think of the product, you don't necessarily have to write this down, but three times three. Well, what is three times three? It's nine. But what is three times three telling you to do? It's telling you to what? Take three and add it to itself. How many times? Three times. So multiplication is just a shorthand for repeated addition. So this is supposed to be three. This is like a shorter way of writing three plus three plus three. Okay? And so the numbers, what's, what's happening here is this three right there is saying add three times and then Right here, it's telling you what to add. 
right? So it's obvious that positive times a positive is always going to be positive. Because multiplication of two positive numbers is telling you to take a positive number and add it up a bunch of times. Obviously, it's going to go out positive. Now, what happens is if you throw in a negative number, so if you had like negative 3 times 3, then what that's telling you to do is it's basically saying like, okay, you're still going to do something three times in a row, but what number are you going to add? You're going to add the negative number, right, three times in a row. Okay, well, what happens when you add a bunch of negative numbers, though? We just talked about that, right? This is ultimately going to come out negative. Okay, so when you have a negative number, it's like, Negative times a positive, what you're really doing is you're adding a negative number a bunch of times. So, of course, it's going to come out negative. So, then, uh, then the weird one, okay, so then why is a negative times a negative a positive? That's the weird one. Like, this one kind of makes sense. You're adding a bunch of positive numbers. This one kind of makes sense. You're adding a bunch of negative numbers. But why does, the, why does a negative times a negative come out positive? Yes, it does. And it cancels out. And what, it, what it's actually telling you is it's saying, okay, negative 3 times 3 was adding negative 3, ten, 3 times. What this is really telling you to do is it's saying to subtract the number 3 times. So, you know, one of these negatives is telling you that the number is going to be negative, And one of these negatives is telling you that you should subtract, you know. And so, well, what did we just find out? How, what happens when you subtract a negative? It actually becomes a positive. And so, really, what uh, positive three, positive three, positive three, and that's why uh, negative times a negative actually comes out positive. It's not just like a fun rule we made up for math. It's like it's actually it's true based on how multiplication works. Anyways, that's not really important that you necessarily know it, but you don't have to take my word for it. Because it's true. Okay. Uh, so, just some quick examples here. Um, so, like, let's say um, something like, all right, uh, let's say 8 times negative 7. What's that got to be? It's got to be negative because it's a positive times a negative. And then, so it's like, basically, when you're multiplying or dividing numbers, you do the operation without the sign, because first you just got to figure out what 8 times 7 is, which is what, 50 something? 56? And then you go back and you decide on what the sign is based on, uh, you know, the rules. So I had a positive times a negative, so it's got to come out negative, right? Um, if you had, let's say, uh, how about negative 36 divided by uh, negative 4? What's that going to be? It's got to be positive because you got a negative divided by a negative, and then you just do 36 divided by 4, which is what? Happens to be 9, I think, and the answer would be positive because you got a negative divided by a negative that's a positive. All right. Um, what happens if, so like in the order of operations, you can have exponents. So what would be, what happens if you like square a negative number? It's going to, that's going to become positive, why? Yeah, so what does squared mean? It means multiply the number by itself two times. So this is negative 5 times negative 5. So it's going to come out to 25, but it's actually going to become positive because when you take a negative number and you multiply by itself, it becomes positive. Now, what would have happened, though? What would happen if we went up an extra power, like negative 5 cubed? It's going to actually flip back to negative then, right? Because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. But then that last negative is going to kick in, and your final answer is going to be a negative 125.
Okay. So with exponents, you have to be careful. And you have to be extra careful because what is this? Is that the same as this? No. It's not. Why? Well, for obvious reasons, why is it different? There's no parentheses. And parentheses are at the tip top of order of operations even before exponents. Okay? So what's that answer going to be? This one is actually going to stay negative, whereas this one became positive. And, and what the reason why is because you can kind of think, this is like saying like, this is like negative 1 times 5 squared. And because the negative is not in the parentheses. So like the parentheses, since there's no parentheses, then we should be doing the exponent first before we apply the negative. And so this one, it's like when you don't have parentheses, the negative just hangs out till the end and just applies itself at the end. And so here, this one's going to stay a negative 25, whereas um, this one will become positive. It's all because of the parentheses. The parentheses say, hey, make that 5 negative first and then square it out. But without the parentheses, it says, hey, square 5 and then apply the negative. Um, so in the, um, the worksheet, I wanted you guys to give a try and then turn in. I'll give you some extra credit for it. Uh, it has all of these negatives, positives. You can work together. You can work in groups. Uh, I don't really mind. Um, and then there's some order of operations stuff in there. But I think, like, I mean, technically we have, like, 35, 40 minutes almost left in the class. So I don't think it'll take you that long. Um, and then just put your name on them somewhere and drop them off to me on your way out. And I don't, you don't have to stick around once you're done. And then I'll try to get them marked tonight and bring them back tomorrow. And then we'll move on to kind of using negative numbers inside equations and expressions and applications. And uh, you're welcome to ask questions, or like I said, work together.
before you turn it in, you may want to check answers with someone around you just to make sure. Um, and you do just have to be careful because sometimes your calculators handle, ne handle negative numbers really goofy. So uh, when you plug them into your calculator, you might want to just check back with the rules to make sure you get the right sign um, because they can be really specific about how you have to enter stuff on the calculator. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. See you tomorrow, man. See you. See you,
Make sure you jot your name on the piece of paper if you bring it in. I didn't put a place for it, but if you just jot it somewhere. Yes, and so um, on Canvas, so I keep these and I try to go through and get the times mm -hmm. fixed on Canvas, but sometimes I don't always get around to it by the time you want to go in and, um, right. was it the 14th day? Yes. Um, so if you open a quiz in Canvas and it looks like you're not given the right time, you can always send me a message okay. before you take it, and then I'll go in and update the time, right. if I don't get to it ahead of time, because sometimes I'm really good about it, and I get them all done okay. ahead, and sometimes I don't. I'll try to do it ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't already give me yours? No. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can keep it if you want. Right. It's like, yes, yeah, so it's like this right here. It's like this notation. So it's, since there's no sign in the middle, these, it's not a subtraction problem. Because this, these parentheses are telling you that that 7 is negative, and then you need whatever goes here, you need to do that. So it's a multiplication. If, if they wanted you to add or subtract it, they put a plus or minus outside that parentheses. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, sir.